Hi, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is the Standards Tech and Science Daily Podcast. Coming up, Bucky the Brown Bear prepares for groundbreaking brain surgery. Now, let's get into it. If you're new here, make sure to hit follow. Florida is preparing for potentially life-threatening winds and storm surges from Hurricane Milton, as concerns remain over what hurricane category it will be when it makes landfall. Hurricane Milton strengthened in extremely rapidly. It went from a uh, just being named as a tropical storm on Saturday evening through to Monday evening, it reached Category 5, which meant at its peak, it had uh, sustained winds in the region of 180 miles an hour. Now, that was on Monday evening. Uh, what has happened since then is that the storm has weakened slightly. It's now at the kind of top end of Category 4, but it's still an extremely powerful hurricane. That's tropical prediction scientist at the Met Office and friend of the show, Julian Hemming. As Julian explains, Milton has been strengthening and weakening over the past 24 to 48 hours. And at one point, there were concerns it could even reach Category 6. It's uh, at the up, uh, upper end of Category 4. It, there'll be some fluctuations over the next day or so, and then we do expect a, a little bit of weakening. But what we have to remember that this is just referring to the peak winds just around the core of the hurricane. It actually, even if it makes landfall over Florida as a Category 3, which is currently what we expect, it'll still be extremely damaging because although the peak winds will be slightly less, they'll still be very, very strong. With air pressure in the storm's eye dropping to a near record low 897 millibars and winds reaching 160 miles per hour, Milton is now the fifth most intense Atlantic hurricane on record. Often with the these kind of hurricanes, which can start out as very small but intense but then weaken slightly but enlarge it means that the area which is uh, affected by storm surge in particular becomes a lot larger and that is one of the major concerns for hurricane milton that uh, we expect a storm surge possibly in the region of three to five meters over parts of the central and southern uh, florida coast on wednesday through thursday and that seems to be one of the major threats from hurricane milton the storm is currently bearing down on the Gulf of Mexico and is expected to remain extremely dangerous as it makes landfall in Florida by tomorrow, Wednesday the 9th of October, hitting the densely populated Tampa Bay area first. Well, we expect landfall of Hurricane Milton to occur uh, kind of UK time overnight Wednesday through to the first part of Thursday. So uh, during that time, it will take uh, probably 12 to 24 hours to completely cross the Florida Peninsula. So there'll be lots of heavy rain in that region. And initially on the West Coast, um, a really strong storm surge and the extremely strong winds, which will still be in the region of 100 to 120 miles an hour at the landfall point, wherever that is along that uh, part of the Florida coast. After that, uh, we expect Milton to then move out into the open waters of the Atlantic. And because the conditions there are not so favourable for sustaining a, a strong hurricane, it will gradually uh, uh, decay during the, the day or two after that. So we expect it to then wind down uh, and down into a tropical storm and then eventually uh, decay a couple of days later. Meanwhile, in other hurricane news, Hurricane Kirk is due to impact parts of Europe. Here's Julian explaining what we know so far. Well, Hurricane Kirk was uh, in the central part of the Atlantic uh, Ocean for many days, uh, a strong uh, Category 3 uh, for a period, Category 4 um, hurricane. Uh, on Monday, it, it went through what we call extratropical transition. That means that it uh, changed from being a hurricane into being a more conventional um, low pressure area which we uh, get in uh, northwestern Europe during the autumn and so that system is now moving in towards western Europe. Hurricane Kirk has now been downgraded to Storm Kirk before its effects can be felt in the UK. We do not expect a direct impact from what is now known as Storm Kirk in the UK but we have our own uh, area of uh, low pressure around the UK to contend with which is producing some uh, very heavy and thundery showers. Now, Bucky the Brown Bear is set to make history when he undergoes brain surgery tomorrow. Unfortunately, Bucky, uh, he, he was in a, born into a group where dad was you know, very prevalent in that group and, and male bears, they're not really around for child rearing, it's all down to the mums. So um, basically, Bucky kind of he couldn't really fit in with the family he was born into. His mum as well, she did, she did an amazing job at the beginning, but she was quite a social animal. She just wanted to spend more and more time out with the social grouping. Um, so unfortunately, Bocky was just, he was just sort of being left on his own quite a bit. 
that's where uh, the amazing keepers at Portland, they stepped in and they actually started hand rearing Poppy because he, he had no one else to do it. That's John Ford, Wildwood's head of bears. He's been overseeing Bucky's care since he first arrived at the Wildwood Trust, Kent. And then they contacted us uh, knowing that uh, we've done some great work with rescue bears over the years. Um, and we had a little chat and we decided that it might actually work really well for Bucky to come to Wildwood in Kent. And we have uh, two males here that were rescued from hunting pits. And that was probably, uh, it was coming up to two years actually, um, two years in December that we've had Bucky and we've mixed him in with Fluff and Scruff and they will get on really, really well. Unfortunately, two-year-old Bucky has been suffering from seizures and related health issues. An MRI scan provided by SuperVet Noel Fitzpatrick as a favour to the trust revealed Bucky had hydrocephalus, which is a buildup of fluid in the brain. Thankfully, the first surgeon to perform a similar operation on a black bear in Asia has agreed to operate on Bucky. So we've got two uh, veterinarians that will be accompanying us on the day. So we've got um, Elliot is a vet that Wildwood uses uh, that we use as standard. Um, he'll come in and he's actually going to run sort of the anaesthetisation side of things. And then we've also got Romain Pizzi. Um, so he's coming to us all the way from Scotland and he's going to perform the actual um, in installing the stent, which is a tube to drain the um, fluid away from Bucky's brain. Romain carried out the operation on the only other bear in history to have this kind of surgery. And once it was completed, the bear went on to live for many years. Although Bucky is the first brown bear to have this surgery, the hope is he will achieve similar results. If anyone wants any more information or wants to help us out, that would be amazing. Um, you can go on Wildwood Trust's website or we have all of the socials we're on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, so yeah, you can find out more details there and we'll see We'll put on updates on there as well about how Bucky's done, how he's gone through the surgery. Let's go to the ads. Coming up, human life expectancy is slowing down and there's some very good news for alien isolation fans. Welcome back. A new study suggests that the increase in human life expectancy is slowing down. Over the 19th and 20th centuries, there have been dramatic increases in how long people are expected to live due to factors such as healthier diets and medical advances. However, research led by the University of Illinois Chicago School of Public Health indicates that the rise has slowed considerably in the last three decades. Experts say that rather than focus on extending how long people live, the emphasis should shift to extending the number of years people spend in good health, as there is more potential in this area. And finally, gamers, if you're a fan of Alien Isolation, then you're in luck, because the cult horror favourite is getting a sequel. Confirmed in a post on X, AI Hope, the original game's creative director, says on the 10th anniversary, it seems only fitting to let you know we've heard your distress calls loud and clear, and the game is in early development. Despite Alien Isolation not initially being a hit with fans, it's now hugely popular. New to the game, well, it's designed to spark the same tension found in the first Alien movie from 1979 by making you unable to kill the alien. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Standard Podcast for all the latest news and analysis. Tech and Science Daily will be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.